Welcome to Liz and I Have an Idea. Today is book two -athon, day three. It's unbelievable. We're almost halfway through the week already. I've also reached the halfway point in my book pile and I'm on book four. I read two books yesterday and the second one that I read was the second challenge on the list. That was the after sunset read and I finished it in about three hours and 19 minutes. Before I get in too deep about talking about that pointless book, I want to talk about the one that I've devoted the past two book two to. And that is Stars Above by Marissa Meyer. Where do I start with this book? I think I need to address the cover of this. I mean, you have this beautiful scarlet ruby red pillow along with this demon glass looking crown and the sapphire blue background. I think it all just looks so good together. I do wish it were a little bit more sparkly, maybe put some glitter on there because beneath that glitter, this book just shines. And that is what I love about these covers. This book is a selection of short stories that carry on the greater narrative of the entire series. The paths of every main character are crossed as they are either chosen and they have something to prove or they are privileged and adored by the masses. So the entire narrative is structured around the original characters from the first series. Each short story is kind of a prologue to the series and it kind of fills in the gaps in the narrative and just it completes the storylines and the timelines that you don't really get to explore in the main series. The final story, and I'm going to spoil it just a little bit, so spoiler alert, is the wedding of Scarlet and Wolf and the engagement of Prince Kai and Cinder. Oh, I love it. It was such a great way to wrap up the entire story and just to kind of of bring a happily ever after to all of the characters that were a perfect match for each other. I marked this book as the book that is written by my favorite author because I'm such a fangirl of Marissa Meyer as well as the entire Luna Chronicles series. I love the books so much and this one didn't disappoint. Solid 9 out of 10. Next is Flight Chimes and Mysterious Times. It's kind of a funny story about a boy who's being kidnapped but then ends up running away to the place where he was being kidnapped to and it's a hidden dimension kind of like a dreamland, more of a shadowland kind of world, and it's really cool. The story follows the rumors that secret doors to other dimensions exist, and there are two that are present in this story, which is London and Lindunium, which is the world that Jack, the main character, ends up in. Kind of kidnapped, he ends up there, ends up in the possession of the lady, and there's no escape for him from this world. It's kind of crazy, so he spends the entire book looking for a way to break free. As I said, this book is set in both London and Lindanium, which is the other dimension of London. It's set in about the 1900s, but the way that it's set, it feels very modern. And it also, it's supposed to be set in winter, but it feels more like it's summer in the city. I don't know, just the way that I was picturing it, it felt more springy summerish than it did winter fallish. So everything that Jack knew is gone. Everything that he sees around him, it's all lies, pretty much. There's a lot of wooden figures. There are new characters. There's dragons, which is very strange, but you know what? It is another dimension, so anything can happen. The only way to break the illusion is for Jack to build a dragon out of the arm hands, I guess, from the Big Ben clock tower. He had to build the dragon, build the wings, put it together, and figure out a way to get back home after this mythical beast grants him a wish. He also had to find the door that matched his home dimension, otherwise he wouldn't have been able to return home, and there are apparently many secret doors in this society or in this world, so he had to find the proper one that would lead him home. This book kind of reminded me of a mashup between Cinder, Ruby Red, and Serafina. Cinder being the kind of mechanical world where everything is built out of parts, they're cyborgs, people aren't 100% human. Ruby Red, because that one, they travel in time throughout the entire series, but it kind of feels like they're going to different dimensions even though they're just traveling in time. And then Serafina, of course, because of the dragon aspect. I wasn't expecting dragons in this story, but you know what? They happened. They were there. Meh. It worked, I guess. What I thought was true, or what I thought was gonna happen, sorry, is that the evil guy, I don't remember his name, it starts with an L, and then the lady, I thought they were gonna have a change of heart and just let him go after he was suffering kind of for so long, but you know what? That didn't happen. You know what? I was disappointed by the last chapter too because there was no reunion between Jack and his parents. Like, come on. It just kind of, he walked through the door and then returned home and that, that was it. There was no big happy ending. So, you know what? I would give this one maybe a six, six and a half out of ten. Not the worst book, but not the best book either. That's my review of the books that I read yesterday. And as for the challenge, well, I've already completed it. The challenge today was to fit as many book titles into the video as possible. And I spent an hour on a script by putting in all of the different book titles and figuring out exactly how I was gonna fit them in. And I, you know what, I hope you guys enjoyed. It did take me a while to do it, but I think I'm happy with the way that it turned out. I don't know, I will see in post. But anyways, that's it for today. I will see you guys tomorrow with day four of Booktubeathon. And until then, keep reading. Bye.